Hello there, this is the Bookkeeping Master on YouTube. Welcome to another depreciation video. So far in this series I've covered what depreciation is, why depreciation needs to be calculated, which assets are depreciated, straight line depreciation, accumulated depreciation, net book value, as well as other things. I suggest you go back and watch from the beginning if you've joined here. In this video, I'm going to cover reducing balance depreciation. So what reducing balance depreciation is, how to calculate it, as well as other things. Okay, there are two depreciation methods, straight line depreciation and reducing balance depreciation. Straight line depreciation was covered two videos ago. It was covered earlier in this course. This video, as already mentioned, is about reducing balance depreciation. Before you can calculate reducing balance depreciation, you first need to know what net book value is, MBV, and how to calculate net book value. You also need to understand the basics of accumulated depreciation. If you understand MBV, net book value, then you should understand accumulated depreciation because accumulated depreciation is part of the net book value calculation. Both of these, however, are covered in the previous video. So if you need a refresher or you don't know what net book value is, you don't know what accumulated depreciation is, go back and watch the previous video. You'll then be in a good place to understand and calculate reducing balance depreciation. And on the right here, this is a picture of me when I cut off the crown of my head and download all the accounting information online and transition into the bookkeeping master. Okay, reducing balance depreciation. What is the formula? It is net book value, which is cost price of the asset minus accumulated depreciation as covered in the previous video. So net book value times by multiply by the depreciation rate. Now let's stop there. Businesses, companies categorize their assets into categories like motor vehicles plant and machinery, fixture and fittings, office equipment. There are set depreciation rates for each of those categories. So motor vehicles, the company may have agreed a 15% depreciation rate for motor vehicles. So any asset that is purchased that comes under that category will be depreciated at a rate of 15%. A desk may be purchased for the business, which comes under fixtures and fittings, and the depreciation rate for fixtures and fittings could be 25%. So that asset will be depreciated at 25%. So that's what I mean by the depreciation rate. It's the agreed rate of depreciation, generally based on the category of the asset, or the asset, um, the category the asset falls into. Okay, so we have the net book value, times by the depreciation rate gives us equals the reducing balance depreciation. This is very different to straight line depreciation. Straight line depreciation was the purchase price, the cost price, minus the salvage value, divide by the number of years or the period expected um, the period the asset was expected to be in the business for. This is a very different formula. Net book value, which is no has no part of straight line depreciation. Net book value times by the depreciation rate. Let's look at some examples. It will make more sense the more examples we look at. If we start looking at figures and calculations, it will really help you to understand and make things more clear. So example one. An asset cost 20,000, that could be pounds, euros, dollars, whatever, 20,000 Australian dollars, New Zealand dollars. The depreciation rate is 25%. So 
So what is the calculation going to be? It's the net book value times the depreciation rate equals the reducing balance depreciation. So 20,000, that's the cost, minus the accumulated depreciation for year one, that's nothing. So the net book value is 20,000 times by 25% equals 5,000. Now that gives us 5,000 depreciation and should give us the net book value moving forward, which will be 20,000 minus 5,000, the cost minus the accumulated depreciation. And in this case, it's just one year. So for year two, it's not 20,000 by 25% again, it's the net book value. So it's not cost price by depreciation rate, it's net book value. The net book value is now 15,000 times by 25%. This depreciation rate is set, it's fixed, it doesn't change. 25% because of 3,750, that's the depreciation rate. And we have a new net book value for year three. Uh, sorry, the 20,000 minus the accumulated depreciation of 5,000 and 3,750. So 11,250. Net book value, not cost price. Net book value by 25%. Once again, this depreciation rate is not changing. It's fixed. It's set. Gives us the depreciation of 2,813 and so on. Year four, year five, year six. Always the net book value by the depreciation rate. Make sense? If not, let me know below. I'm here to help you. Put something in the comments and I'll, I'll try to help you. Example two, the asset cost 800 and the depreciation rate is 10%. So year one is 800 by 10%. Now you may think, well, this is cost price by depreciation rate. It just so happens that in year one, the cost price is the same as net book value. This is net book value. It's not cost price. It's just that the net book value is 800 because there's been no accumulated depreciation yet. So it's the same as the cost price. So year one, 800 by 10% gives us 80. The depreciation for year one is 80. And then if we do 800 minus the 80 gives us our net book value for year two. So 720 net book value by 10%, 72. Year three, 648 net book value by the same depreciation rate, 10%, gives us 65. There are more examples on my website. Thanks for watching, and I'll speak to you in the next video.